select 12 jurors to sit in the jury box for a trial. And I start in with, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your willingness to serve as jurors. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what jury duty is about <clears throat> and what the justice system is about and why it's so important that you're here. Now, Groucho Marx once said, I was married by a judge, but I should have had a jury. <laughs> so I usually get a good laugh on that. And I said, now, there's a little bit of truth in that. And the truth is this. By the time a litigant, whether it's a criminal case or a civil case, gets to their moment of truth, which is the trial, they're told they have a... Their attorney says, you have a choice. You can either have a judge hear your case or you can have <clears throat> a jury hear your case. And about 98% of the time, they choose to have a jury hear their case. <clears throat> so without... Good citizens like yourselves willing to serve as jurors, our justice system would come to a screeching halt. Now you might say, what's so important about this justice system that it can't come to a screeching halt? And I think a story that took place about 3,000 years ago gives us a little insight into why that's so important. It's a story about a young king, his name is Solomon, and he has a problem in front of him. The problem is this, two women are in front of him. They both lived in the same house and they both gave birth to baby boys three days apart. And unfortunately one of the babies died shortly thereafter. And now both women were in front of Solomon claiming to be the true mother of the remaining child. And like a good judge or ju a good juror, Solomon listened to both sides. He asked them both questions. He allowed them to ask each other questions. But he still couldn't figure it out. They both had a good story. So he threw up his hands in frustration and said, give me a sword. I'm going to cut the baby in half and give half to each mother. And the two women thought about it and the first woman said, well, I guess, if you have to. And the second woman said, no, bad idea. That will kill the baby. So give the baby to her, the first woman. At that point, Solomon says, aha, the true mother, or certainly the best mother, the one that, want, that loves the child, wants to save the child's life, is the second mother, so I'm awarding that child to the second mother. So here's what the story illustrates. The story illustrates that all households, these two women live in the same house, all families, all communities, all societies, all countries, have disputes between the different entities. Sometimes it can be corporations, sometimes it can be government, or sometimes it's just two people have a dispute. And we can't allow disputes, disagreements, to escalate into violence. And we can't allow them to sit around and fester and poison the relationships within our community. So what a courthouse is all about, a trial is all about, is the resolution of disputes. That's simply, whenever you drive by a courthouse, you can say, that's where we resolve disputes. Now, if you fast forward about 2,700 years, you have a very important document that we're all familiar with. Radical document. The Declaration of Independence, July 4th, 1776. And that document said, we declare ourselves to be independent of you, King George. And up until that time, it was such a radical statement because up until that time, it was believed that you had to be of noble birth to govern. And suddenly, a bunch of people that were not of noble birth were saying, we don't need the nobility, we do not need you anymore. And that document also said that everybody is born with certain inalienable rights. The right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those truths are self-evident, that document said. And it said, all men are created equal. But the English commentators at the time laughed at us because they said, how can you say all men are created equal when you enslave a substantial portion of your population? 
And so, 87 years later, the American president said, four score and seven years <clears throat> ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. And at the end of that short speech, he said, we are <clears throat> now engaged in a great war to determine if this nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. And endure we did. And a hundred, uh, <clears throat> and a few years after that, 1889, the citizens of the territory of Washington adopted a constitution. And the constitution said, the right to jury trial in civil and criminal cases will be inviolate. That's the reason you're here, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Also at the time in the Declaration of Independence was a list of grievances. We are leaving you King George because we believe you to be a tyrant. Here's why you are a tyrant. You are denying us the right to jury trial. At the time, in certain cases where the king's interests were representative, the king's judges would not impanel juries. <clears throat> so cases were decided arbitrarily in favor of the king's interests. And so that is one reason we have such a strong connection to juries that comes down from 1776. So for many different reasons and for many different ways, it's important you're here today. <clears throat> Thank you for taking so much time out of your busy life to participate in jury duty mm. and a speech.